You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're gonna hit a good one and most of your playing partners are gonna struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are gonna share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so there is a cheat code of sorts to playing absolutely fantastic golf. And that cheat code is impact. Everything else you do in your golf swing doesn't mean anything until we get this position exactly like the pros are doing it. If you look, every single pro in the world, they look pretty daggone similar at impact. Well, I'm gonna walk you through it, all the way from toes, knees, hips, shoulders, the entire body, how to get to this perfect impact position. And I guarantee you it'll pay dividends much more than anything else you could do. So first let's learn kind of the number one fundamental of this. We have to deliver the club with a square face, which we know, we also have to deliver this club with shaft lean to be able to take loft off and compress this golf ball. So pros, they're taking about 30% off of the natural loft of the club. So I got a nine iron here that's low 40s loft. If I take 30% of that off, that means I'm getting all the way down at around 30 degrees, maybe even slightly under 30 degrees at impact. All that means is if the shaft is straight up and down at impact, so if I'm hitting the golf ball, I'm standing up out of my posture, I'm flipping, that shaft is gonna be straight up and down I need that shaft to be leaning forward about 15 degrees with my short irons, uh, slightly even more than that if you go all the way into a lob wedge. And then it'll gradually be less and less with your shorter irons and as you go into, or longer irons and go into the driver. The main reason for that is just the ball position changes. So if I got my nine iron here in the middle of my stance even slightly back, that's 15 degrees of shaft lean. As this ball gets slightly and slightly farther forward, I don't have to change my swing at all, but if this is the ball position of a three iron, all of a sudden there's not quite as much shaft lean. So the cool thing about this, you get it down with a short iron, you get enough shaft lean, and it's gonna carry over to all your clubs just by changing the ball position. Really get your short irons down, you don't have to worry about the rest. So here at that nine iron, I'm launching it at 19 degrees, 19.7, even though there's, again, over 40 degrees aloft on this club, and I'm getting a dynamic loft of somewhere around 30. So if I come over here to my computer, I'll toggle the screen, and we'll see that on that shot, I can highlight it for you. I'm right at 30.5 degrees of dynamic loft or lofted impact. So that's the foundation of everything else that we're gonna build. So then how do we get there with the rest of our body? Well, start with the toes. I need my weight to be shifting to the left to be able to get that kind of shaft lean. If you imagine, if I'm on my right foot here, put all your weight on your right foot, and I'm gonna try to get this shaft lean forward as much as I can. I've really got my arms extended there. Well, it's not really doing much at all. All of a sudden I go to my left foot and my weight is transferring left. Now I can get a ton of shaft lean. So the weight has to be shifting over to the left. You're gonna feel pressure on the ball of your foot and it's gonna feel like your weight goes to the right in the swing early and then through impact, all your weight's transitioning left. Your left leg is kind of bracing back up into your body to keep you from sliding forward and it's allowing you to rotate when you do that. So your foot is kind of pushing back up into you, which creates rotation, and it keeps you able to get on your left, <coughs> left side without sliding in front of it. That's your first piece. Now your right foot is just as important. You need to be having pressure on the inside of your right toe, and you need to be feeling like the right heel is coming off the ground. If the heel doesn't come off the ground, I can't open my body and get the shaft lean that I need. Now, if we move forward to the knees, they're doing a pivot action. So my right knee is going forward and my left knee is kind of clearing back. So back swing my knees do this, down swing my knees do that. And the more of this type of a pivot action, right knee goes toward the ball, left knee kind of clears out of the way. The more of that I get, the more shaft lean and the better I can compress the golf ball. Again, if we don't get the shaft lean, it's not gonna sound like the great players that they hit it and you think to yourself, wow, that it has a different ring to it than what mines are doing. Much heavier of a hit. You ever talked about, ever heard somebody say a heavy hit? That's exactly what I'm training you here today. All right, so let's move up to the hips now. As my weight shifts to the left, my knees pivot, and that gets my hips to clear open. Now, most importantly, I wanna get my belt buckle in front of the golf ball as this is happening. So I don't wanna stay back here and open up my hips, belt buckle behind the golf ball. I wanna get that weight shift to the left, open my hips up, and now all of a sudden, my belt buckle is way up here. That's gonna get my weight up there, it's gonna clear my hips out. Almost imagine your belt buckle turning to where 
it's kind of going toward your left knee or going toward the target as that's happening. Now, here's a big key with your hips that most people don't get. A lot of times, we think we need to hit at the golf ball really hard, and we stand up and kind of throw the club at the golf ball. That's burning up all the energy too early, and I'm staying out of my posture. A great key for this is feeling like my hips get lower to the ground. Or you can almost imagine that there's a plane of glass here that's kind of at a low angle, and I'm feeling like I'm getting my entire body under that plane of glass so I can swing in at a shallower angle. And that brings me to the next point of this really tour quality impact, which is I can't be having my handle go this way. Anytime, even if I have shaft lean, if I lean the handle up like this, so if I do this at all where the handle goes away from my body, see this big angle here, I've even seen people teach this, that pulls the heel of the club off the ground and it raises the sweet spot higher into the air. That's why, you're not, that's why you're probably struggling when you get those really tight lies to hit it on the sweet spot. We have to get lower, shallow this club out, kind of let my hips sit down, and then I'm, I'm letting this club come into the ground very, very flush. People will say, well, I just need to get my lie angle adjusted. There's no amount of lie angle adjustment that can happen if I'm standing up out of my posture and flipping it that'll get the sole of the club flat. If I do make it flat, it's gonna cause a bunch of problems with other things. So we don't wanna go down that route. We wanna do it the way the pros are doing it, right? Because those are the guys that are hitting it consistently solid. Now if we move up the chain there a little bit more, so we've talked about the hips need to kind of squat down. My belt buckle needs to get toward my left foot. I did skip the knees a little bit. I want a little bit of flex in the knees, left knee and right knee at impact. It's not all the flex isn't going out of those knees until what we call the straight line release out in front, but I'm really letting that lean forward. Now from there, what about my chest and my upper body? This is a really big point here. If I'm gonna get into a good impact position, I need to be behind the golf ball with my upper body. Now that's crazy because you just said, hey Clay, you gotta get your belt buckle in front, but your upper body behind, that's exactly right. And the reason for that is, I have to be in a position where I can deliver this club from the inside. And if my upper body starts to slide in front, that's gonna kick the club steeper and more over the top. So a great cheat for this is I like to think of my shirt buttons or my sternum. I wanna have it slightly behind the golf ball as my belt buckles in front. So I'm getting my weight to shift to the left. My knees are pivoting, so all my lower body is going toward the target, but my upper body is staying behind the golf ball. That allows me to get into position where I can get shaft lean but now you'll see shirt buttons kind of at the golf ball or slightly behind. Nose is definitely behind the golf ball. I don't want it to be way back here. I'm not falling back. I'm just shifting to the left and keeping my nose just ever slightly behind the golf ball. That's gonna get you in that perfect impact position. Now, there's a lot of questions on how do I know if I'm doing it the right way? And there's a really cool training aid that I like. It's called the DST compressor. And the more I use this thing, the more I like it. So here I have a, an eight iron, and what it has is a bent club shaft. So what you end up doing is to get this club to sit flat on the ground, now all of a sudden I have to get that shaft lean that all the pros have. And to make it even easier, there's a line that's vertical on this club that shows me the right amount of shaft lean. So if I go ahead and just go to impact like we just talked about and kind of practice my impact position, my club is flat on the ground, my hands are way in front with the shaft lean, and if I'm looking at the hosel of this club, that line is vertical straight up and down. If I start to lean it back this way, all of a sudden the line's leaning too far that way. If I get too much shaft lean, so if you're wondering, how, am I overdoing it? If I get too much shaft lean, the line's leaning too far forward that way. So I just gotta get this line perfectly vertical, and I know I'm getting the right amount of shaft lean. So this is a really cool training aid. Now, if you want one of these, I'll put a link down below in the description. We worked out a special deal with Bertie Cordell, who the designer and inventor of this, fantastic training aid. And if you follow that link, it's gonna be as cheap as you can find it anywhere on the internet. Now, we get a few bucks every time you buy one from there. You don't have to have this. It's just I've used this, and it answers a lot of questions of whether or not you're doing it the right way. So if you do wanna get one, always helps us out, helps us to grow the channel, make these great videos. I really appreciate you for doing that. But again, we don't have to have one of these. It's just a cool way of making things easier. 
So let me go ahead and hit a couple shots with this now that I feel like I'm in front. And again, let's go over some of these keys and then I'll build out into the shoulders and the arms what this great impact is. So let me go ahead and hit one here. Belt buckle in front, but nose behind. There we go, man, that sounded fantastic. And what I found sometimes is if you're not getting quite enough shaft lane, you might even overdraw this club. You see, what happens is the more I get shaft lane, the more it opens the face. So you might overdraw this club the first couple times you use it. That's an awesome little feedback mechanism for, for me there. Wasn't a bad shot, but I probably could have used two or three degrees more shaft lane here. So if I wanted to do that, let's talk about how I would do that. Let's go up to the shoulders now. Now with the shoulders, if I want a bunch of shaft lane, the right shoulder has to rotate and the left shoulder has to rotate up out of the way. The right shoulder has to rotate forward and down, but not letting my nose slide in front. So I need to get my right shoulder under my chin as much as possible, which is gonna push my hands farther and farther in front, but not doing this to get it over there. So basically, long story short, if I put a club across my shoulders, all I'm doing is rotating my shoulders open more and I'm rotating them in a very steep angle like this. So I'm staying in my posture. My right shoulder goes down as my left shoulder goes up. Kind of like if I had a fan blade here with my arms and I just tilted that fan this way. So my shoulder's going forward, but I haven't slid in front of it. Now, if I do that, that gives me tons more room to now get my arm farther in front. See how much more I can push my right hand in front when that right shoulder goes down and I rotate more open? Left shoulder goes up, I can get a ton of shaft lean there. Let's go ahead and try out another little easy eight iron here with this DST compressor club. There we go, and much better. I like the shaft lean I got with that, and you can see immediately I started to straighten that out a little bit. So that's the shoulders. The more I can open them, and the more I get into what's called right side bend. So what I'm doing here is I'm bending my body to the right, and I'm opening it, or a simpler way of doing that is a tilted kind of fan blades this way. That allows me to get more and more shaft lean as much as I want to. So there we go, nice smooth swing, 195 total carry distance with a seven iron. Players ask me all the time, how do you hit it so far with what looks like so little effort? Well, the answer is very simple. The answer is we can get very easy speed through getting proper lag in the downswing. And then of course, unloading that lag. Now, the big hiccup that you're probably getting into when you're working on lag is a ton of different things. There's things where, hey, I can get lag, but my wrist cups a lot. Or I can get, uh, you know, I can try to get lag when I, in my practice swings, but I end up casting it. Well, if you understand how this works the proper way, it becomes much more simple. So I'm very excited to share a drill that I do with a lot of my online students that shows you exactly how lag works in a short swing. The thing is, is lag works exactly the same in a short swing as it does a full swing. And if you understand it in a short swing, it becomes much more easy to see in the full swing. So let's go over the short swing first. And what's great about doing a short swing and doing anything like this, and what I really like to do when I'm teaching is making sure we have very solid reference points and very certain levels, things that we can tangibly see in our mind while we're working on our swing. And one of those big things when we're working on lag is understanding where the club head is or hands and then something else in, in relationship to those. So that may seem a little bit difficult, but stick with me here. It becomes very simple very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line right on my hips. So we can think about this being our belt line. And we're gonna learn lag from a half swing so that we can put it into a full swing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this club halfway back. So hands are gonna stay just below the belt line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come forward and we're going to lag the club. If we think about our waistline, the club head and the hands, and, we'll, and we think about how this works, we're gonna think as the hands go forward, we're going to get this club head to go above the belt line. That's gonna be the sensation. Now let me show you what happens when the hands don't move forward and I'm lagging the club. If my hands are here and they don't move forward, the club is going to go up into the air. You can see I can do this while curling my knuckles down. I can do this while cupping. Ideally, we wanna curl those knuckles down while getting this lag so that we can come in with a square face like we talk about in the move section on the course. But if we get the club head to go up, 
then it's easy to see. Where we don't see this is when the, the hands are about parallel, or so the hands are here, and we move the hands forward, because what appears to happen is the club head doesn't do anything at all. So that's the, some of the trickery in our mind that we don't see. So you can see here, if my hands don't move forward, we can see the club head go up. If my hands do move forward, we don't see that club head move very much. That's the subtlety of lag, and that's one of the big starters that I'm having a ton of success with my students on where they're getting the sensation of lag in the downswing. So we can utilize understanding where the hands are, where the club head is, and how that works. So now that we understand how this is gonna work, so we have our waist, our, our line on our belt line, we've got our club head here, we know this club head is going to go above the belt line as the hands are going forward. So they, we're gonna be getting this little lag move in the swing. Once we have that sensation, now we can start throwing that into some swings. So I highly recommend starting with some dry swings here first. Go up to the top, as the hands come forward, get that club head to feel like it stays above the belt line as we unturn. And you're gonna see that we can start to develop some room to get some forward shaft lean, get that easy speed. There's a lot of great things that happen from this, but we're gonna focus in on the lag. So we're gonna go here, as the hands come forward, the club head's going to feel like it goes up. And now, the good sensation is feeling like this club head stays above the belt line as long as it can. You'll see, if, unless you, if you don't hold it, that club will kind of naturally want to unload into the ball. So let's hit a little shot like this, where I'm gonna get the, the club head to feel like it's going above the belt line as the hands are going forward. So we can see there, nice lag on the downswing and compression. Now the cool part about this is now we've got a good grasp on how we lag the club in a half swing, this is exactly how it happens in the full swing. So all we have to remember here is that position when we get into that, the hands parallel to the ground. And when we come up to the top of the swing, we're gonna think about that same position. As the hands are gonna go forward, this move that we have with the wrist where the knuckles are curling down and we're lagging, we're gonna do that same move at the top of the swing as the hands go forward. So just like in the half swing, as the hands go forward, at the top of the swing, as the hands go forward, that's when we get the lag on the downswing. That is such a big deal, I can't even describe understanding that visual. I'm gonna go over that one more time so we have a very clear visual for this. We are going to curl those knuckles down, lag the club so the club head's gonna go above the belt as the hands go forward. When we go up to the top of the swing, we have that same move. As the hands go forward, that club head is going to go up. So again, if I don't move my, if I don't move my hands, the club head goes up. If I go to the top of my swing, if I don't move my hands, club head's gonna go up. And in this case, because we're at the top of the swing, it's gonna go more down. So as you can see from the down the line view, this is going to be curling down. So you can see that club face squaring up. Then up at the top of the swing, it's going to be squaring up. Same exact move. Now, let's do one more little half swing, and then we'll show you how we do it here in the full swing. I'm gonna have to get that sensation that the club head's staying above the belt. Okay, nice little compressed draw right there. Very, very nice. Had a lot of lag, got a lot of energy into that ball. So that ball carried 100 something yards and I barely swung at it at all because of the lag that we can put into it. Now, just a quick bonus, just because I'm thinking about it here real quick, it's also a great shot to learn while you're training this. You can see you can hit really low, nice shots out of trees if you need to. But if you do this next move correctly, you're gonna be in the trees a lot, lot less. So we're gonna take that same sensation Hands moving forward, we're gonna go up to the top of the swing, had that club lag nice at the top just like we did in the half swing, now that we have a good understanding for it, and utilize that nice easy speed it gives us. So as you can see right there, I tugged that one just a little bit, but 209 carry distance, 228, that was absolutely pounded. I tell you what, when I start working on and I'm doing instruction on lag, it's unbelievable how much my numbers go up. I should probably work on this a lot more myself, but that speed is just ridiculous. That's a lot more than I normally try to hit this club on the course, but I'm telling you, when I'm doing this right now, I can feel how that lag is releasing into the ball, and I'm telling you, once you get a good sensation for this, you're gonna feel the same thing. I see this with students every single day when they send me an email and they're like, wow, I can't believe how much further I'm hitting the ball because of how much energy this transfers into. So let's go ahead and try this one more time, see if we can get a nice straight one. Now there we go, nice solid shot, started right on my target line, maybe drew maybe 15 feet to the left. That's gonna be really good, especially with a 220 total carry 
with the seven iron. I'm telling you, when you work and get this lag in there, it doesn't even take nearly as much, it doesn't take nearly as much effort as you might think to get that energy into the ball. Now, that's just the first big piece there. If we are getting that lag, we're gonna get a ton of speed, but if it's not directed properly, we won't get those kind of results. So we need to make sure that we are also shallowing this club out and squaring it up properly while adding the lag move that we went over in this lesson. Now most people have a swing that doesn't perform under pressure, it's not as accurate, and it's a heck of a lot of effort without the accuracy and distance that you want because it's more of a hit at the golf ball rather than a swing of the golf club. And the way that the golf swing should work, and I'll go ahead and show you this here in a second, but this U-type motion where the butt end of this club is gonna move in a U, and if I do this properly, the club really wants to take off as I turn back up on this U. It's what's called parametric acceleration, or you can imagine as a speedboat with a skier behind it. They're both moving along at, let's say, 30 miles an hour, and as that speedboat makes that turn, it slings the skier out, and the skier can almost go twice the speed that the speedboat is moving because of that acceleration around the corner and that slingshot type effect. So what's happening here is on this U, if my club creates some lag and then I turn that corner, that allows the club head to just slingshot off there and go a heck of a lot faster. It also allows the club to be a lot more accurate when you're doing that. So let me go ahead and just show you how this could work or how easy this looks if you learn how to do it the right way, and then I'll work through an entire body workout to train you how to do this. All right, so let's swing really slow here. I'm just gonna let this club, I'm gonna take advantage of that U-type motion, and as my body turns that club back up, it's gonna look incredibly slow, and you're gonna see a decent amount of distance. Now we're gonna start off with little quarter swings here with a seven iron, and we're gonna see how this goes fairly far, even with what looks like a slow motion swing. There we go, nice and solid. 143 yards with a nice tight draw. I felt like that was a chip shot, to be honest with you. I felt like it was very, very slow, like I'm almost putting no energy into it at all. Now I'm gonna take it back a little farther and I'm just gonna pick it up maybe 10 or 15%. And again, notice how slow and smooth this looks. Look how it's almost no amount of effort. I'm letting the club do a lot of this work for me uh, by using the physics of this. Let me go ahead and try another one here just a little faster. There we go, same thing. Barely swung any harder, I'm up to 163. Not a terrible distance for a seven iron. That is almost no energy. I could probably hit a 500 golf balls in a row and just not get tired using that kind of a technique. I'll add a little bit more force to it here to get closer to a three quarter swing. I started to apply a little bit of power there now it goes to 177. Again, a nice tight draw on each one of those. And then if I really want to hammer on it, I can use that same type of pattern, but now put out a little bit more effort. I'm gonna make a little bigger swing, and I'm gonna make sure that this club really takes off like I'm gonna teach you here in a bit using this technique. So let's go ahead and go full swing here, full power. And we can see, even with that one, 192, not incredibly fast jerky, I'm still getting a lot of speed. All those were nice tight draws. All of them would be very close to the target. Pretty daggone happy with that, with a normal seven iron. So, how do we do this? Well, what's going on here, like I talked about the speedboat, is your club, the swing is a U, and the club should feel like a U. Now, what's happening is the bottom of the U, so if you imagine there's a U shape here, the bottom of that is not when the club is straight up and down. The bottom of the U, the club is still angled back like this. So this club is traveling in the downswing. It hits the bottom of the U here, if you're looking at the, the low point of my butt into the club, and as that club starts to turn back up, that's what slings the club forward. So what most people think about is they think about this U-type shape as a swing, so if I'm doing this with a golf swing, they think about, if I'm looking at the butt end of the club, they, they imagine the lowest point of the butt end of the club being right at the golf ball when it releases, and then the club starts to come up like this. In reality, the low point of the swing, the low point of the, the U or the butt end of the club is here. This club is lagging back. And then as I rotate open, that slings the club off. Again, I can just take it with two fingers here, barely make any kind of a movement at all. And you see I'm swinging this club, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. It almost wants to flip around uncontrollably because I'm taking advantage 
of that little motion, that little turning back up. So here's how you train it. All it is is the right side of you are going up is my weight shift to the right. And then I shift my weight to the left as I'm going down the U. And then I'm going to extend on through as I'm coming through. That's what allows the club to whip on through. Start it with your feet just going to the right and to the left. And I like to think of your arms. Put your palms out like this. And I almost think about that swinging as my weight shifting to the left. And then I'm coming on through. So I'm just going right foot, shifting the left, left foot. So just get this basic right-left motion down. That's the key to being able to feel like this is in you know, some kind of uh, synchronized motion. Now let's go up to the knees. You see the key here is the knees are gonna do the same thing. They still make this U-type motion. So in the back swing, my legs turn and I'm kind of going up this side of the U. Then I squat to get it a little bit lower. That's when the club would be low. And then from there, I'm gonna, so my knees have some bend here at this point. And as I come back up, my legs are extended. So when I finish my swing, my right leg's pretty extended. My le left leg is dead straight. Practice that about 10 or 15 times. Back swing, so my knees are rotating. They're going this way. Down swing, I squat, knee bend, and then I let my knees extend, or I'm going ahead and extending my pelvis and my body to let that club sling on through there. Same thing with the hips. Little back swing, I'm turning to the right. Down swing, I lower my hips a little bit. Not that much, but it's mostly from the leg bend. My belt buckle's gonna come down maybe an inch. <clears throat> and then from there, I'm turning that corner back up that U, and that allows my club to swing. So we've done weight shift right and left. We've added the knees. We've added the hips. And now we're gonna do the same thing with the shoulders. You see the shoulders are just simply, if you take your arms out to your sides, let those swing. My shoulders and my lower body is gonna feel like it gets closer to the ground. See, if you're standing up out of your posture, what you're doing is you have the bottom of your swing, you have the extension of this club <clears throat> as the bottom of that U. Instead of feeling like you should be, I'll show you here in a second. So if I'm doing it the wrong way, I stand up out of my posture in the downswing. I feel like my body goes away from it and I'm trying to throw that club to reach the bottom of the U. What I should be doing here is letting my chest and my body get closer to the golf ball. I almost feel like if I had uh, my shirt buttons working closer to the golf ball as I start down, then I'm in that position where I would have a bunch of lag. And then from there, I'm gonna turn on through and my shirt buttons are gonna be really high toward the target. So again, my chest, my shirt buttons are doing this. They're getting closer and then they're rotating all the way around. Everything is this U type shape. It's on a little bit of an angle here for looking from down the line, but it's still this U type shape. So get closer to the ball, then let it sling on through there. You see, if I don't get closer, <clears throat> if I'm too far away, I have to throw the club to the ball. I have to throw the club down here. If I'm closer to the ground, that's what allows me to sling the club through. So I'm getting my, my hands and body lower, and then as I sling it on through there, that's going to let everything take off. Finally, the hands. Again, if I extend them out from my body, there's my low point, but that's when the club's back here. Then everything slings. See, the, my hands and arms turn back up the U because my knees are turning back up and extending, my hips, <clears throat> my shoulders, everything's coming back up and in. My arms are just an extension of that. So at the bottom of that U, my hands and arms are here, and then look how they're gonna move up and that club is gonna sling as it's coming through. So now that you can visualize it like this, let's do 10 or 15 reps. Weight shift right and left. Add the knees, add the hips, add the shoulders. Everything's slinging through there. Then finally add the arms, and that club is really, really gonna take off. Let's give it one more try here. I'll put a little extra on it. Got a little bit more loosened up after doing those drills. Let's see if I can kick it up even farther. 192 is gonna be hard to beat with a seven iron. But I'll give it a whirl and I'll try to be pretty smooth as I'm doing it. Uh, maybe not quite. I got 195, a little bit better. So a nice tight draw again. I'm letting this club get down here and it's slinging and taking off rather than me trying to manipulate it and guide it. One surefire way to know if you're doing this right, if you feel like your hands are trying to hit or throw in the downswing, you're not letting the, the club do the work for you. You're not using this U to let it take off. 
Now, there's one more piece to this. You see, there's one thing that can screw all this up, no matter how hard you're trying to do this U-type motion. The fact of the matter is, is your club is swinging on a plane. Your club is swinging on an angle, and the club should be pointing down somewhere toward the ball as you start your downswing. Now, unfortunately, most people get this club too steep as they start their downswing, and they end up having to stand up out of their posture to shallow that club out. So you see if my club angle is steep, I can stand up and it shallows it out, and that makes it impossible for me to get closer to the ball like we talked about here and turn back up later and get some great results letting the club do the work for you. So first, let's make sure that you're not starting down too steep. Let's get the club on the right angle. Now I have a great video that walks you through this first move down and why you don't want to do something that's all too common for players. I'll play a preview of that here in a second. Just go ahead and click the card that you see somewhere up on your screen. If you don't see one of those cards, go down to the link below in the description, click that. You'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to show you these secrets so you can play a whole heck of a lot better. And once you pair this up with what we did here, just let the club do all the work. Quit feeling like you're banging your head against the wall and let's get the most efficient golf swing that we can. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the bottom line is that by trying to ring that bell or pull the hands down more from the inside, it gets the club shaft steep, steep and runs your entire downswing. Now what you end up having to do is to keep from just keeping down on that steep angle and burying the club behind the golf ball, you have to stand up out of your posture and that's really the root cause of all your problems. Now, maybe you're being outdriven way too often or you're terribly inconsistent with your strikes. Some of your shots are heavy, some of them are thin, some of them are off the toe, and then the next ones are way off the heel. Now you end up way over in the trees, you're in the tall grass, or maybe even the hazards all day long, and it really comes down to this. Clay, how in the heck do we fix it? Well, there's some good news. Well, there's only two things that you need to learn. First, you need to learn to shallow the club rather than pulling the hands down and getting the shaft in the steep position. You see, there's another way that the pros do this, and once you start to get that club on the shallower plane, more from the inside, then you pair that up with the right way to square the club face. And once you put these two things together, everything starts to fit in your swing. Now your buddies will start to get a little bit jealous because you'll start hitting solid, longer drives, time after time, and round after round. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the E-slot technique. Let's walk through exactly how to do it. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and take a swing to the top and get in a really good position. I want you to feel like your weight is mostly shifted to your right side and that your hips and shoulders are nice and free. I don't want to be locked up here. I want my knees to move, my hips to move. And that's going to allow me to swing my shoulders very nicely. Now, one thing that most people get wrong when they swing to the top is they don't get this tilt away from the target. So instead of being straight up and down or leaning to the left, I want to be slightly tilted away in what I call the stable fluid spine in my top speed golf system. Okay, so now that you're at this great position at the top of the swing, what I want you to do is instead of pulling those arms straight down or ringing the bell, that's gonna get the club shaft steep and get this elbow kind of flapping behind your body. I want you to do something very specific. I want you to take the tip of your elbow and move it in a specific way. Now, not this small bone on the inside of your elbow, but I want it to be right here at the tip. And here's what I want you to do. 